The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Please enjoy the presentations. The fourth presentation this morning will be given by Philip Grosser, who is a Ph.D. candidate at the University of Stuttgart in Stuttgart, Germany. He's uh, working under Dr. Fuchs and Dr. Rolf Elegehausen. The title of his presentation is Installation of Adhesive Anchors Theory and Practice. I think uh, Werner alluded to some of the information regarding installation uh, observations. And I believe Philip has got some additional information regarding field observations of installation, and I'm very anxious to hear what he says. Philip. Yeah, thank you very much for your introduction. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As already mentioned, um, I want to present about the installation of adhesive bonded anchors. So uh, the differences between the theory, so uh, um, the knowledge we have, uh, the knowledge we've adopted in our regulations, and the practice. So. Uh, the installation of these anchors, uh, the handling of these anchors. So in other words, this is what people do on a job site. Um, what is the motivation presenting such a topic? And post-installed anchoring technology with a mechanical anchor and adhesive anchor systems has found widespread use in concrete construction um, due to their numerous fields of applications and their flexibility in fastening solutions. Um, this has yielded to uh, different products on the market with uh, different installation procedures. Um, for many applications, uh, a post-installed anchor seems to be the perfect choice. Um, however, as it is for uh, cast-in anchors, the use of a post-installed anchor requires in-depth knowledge of all people involved. Um, these are the producers who supply the anchors and the tools. These are the engineers who design the fastening, the installers who really install uh, the anchors inside, and uh, as well as uh, the uh, inspectors who have to ensure that the installation is done in accordance with uh, the installation instructions and the evaluation reports. Starting point of uh, every uh, fastening uh, application is the choice of the correct product. Um, this requires the understanding of the load to be resisted. So the direction of the load, is it a tension force, is it a shear force, is it a short-term load, sustained load, the design method, the exact location of the fixed and pouring, the source of the load, the environmental conditions such as temperature, or is it an indoor application or an outdoor application, and of course the installation procedure and the requirements. Reliable fastenings with adhesive anchors requires the selection of a product which meets the uh, actual acceptance criteria, e.g. AT308, so a pre-qualified anchor should be selected. What I want to say is um, that the engineering office is responsible for the design of the fastening. Um, to ensure that the anchors are installed correctly on site, the installer has to follow exactly the instructions which can be found in the manufacturer's product installation instructions. Um, regulated are all important steps of uh, the installation, uh, such as drilling, hole cleaning, the installation of the adhesive and the anchor, and the curing process. And furthermore, every adhesive anchor installation requires either periodic or continuous special inspection. To picture this, here you can see an excerpt from uh, an uh, evaluation service report. Adhesive anchor installation, uh, installations require special inspection in accordance with uh, the requirements or the regulations of uh, the building code. So the inspector has to check the strength and the age of the base material, drill bits, hole diameter, depth, cleanliness, and the exact location of, uh, of the fixing point, the temperature, details to the product, uh, uh, the expiration date, uh, the adhesive, the anchor. So in other words, he has to verify that the anchor installation is performed in accordance with the installation instructions and the evaluation reports. So as you can see, in theory, the knowledge is available to ensure reliable fastenings with uh, adhesive bonded anchors. However, in practice, failure of adhesive anchor uh, applications happen, and due to this, uh, the use of uh, adhesive anchors has been called into question. Um, what I want to show you is uh, an installation of an adhesive bonded anchor system monitored on site. 
What you can see is an installer who is turning in more than accurately a threaded rod into a borehole. Um, now what you can see, uh, he's pulling out uh, the threaded rod. I mean, I asked him what he's doing, and he said he only wants to check that there is enough adhesive around the anchor bolt. And now what he's doing, he's turning back uh, the threaded rod. What you can see is that there is a lot of adhesive staying out of the borehole. And uh, now to, to complete his accurate word, work, he uh, is using the dispenser and he fills all the visible holes around the mouth of the borehole. And I mean, um, this has not that much to do with a correct anchor installation. To avoid uh, such misuse and misinstallations, it is necessary to identify the problems. Um, therefore, in the first step in uh, 2007 in Europe, a survey on the installation of adhesive anchors um, was performed. Uh, a total number of uh, 212 installers filled out the survey, but um, it was only a questionnaire, so uh, the surveys were distributed to the installers and they sent back the answered questionnaires. And the key results uh, of uh, this survey uh, can be summarized as follows. So nearly every installer answered that he's performing some hole cleaning, but not in all cases the requirements of the approvals have been followed. Also, the high variety of uh, different uh, products and therefore the high variety of different cleaning procedures are confusing the installers. Um, as already mentioned, it, it was all, uh, only a, a survey. So the general opinion after this study was that personal interviews and the real monitoring on site of the, uh, the installation of these anchors would help to get more precise and reliable information. Therefore, based on this study in 2009 in the United States, a field research project was started to identify the situation on sites with respect to the installation of these anchors. The field research project included two parts. First of all, on site, all information relevant to the installation uh, was monitored and uh, the findings were recorded in a protocol. Uh, second thing was uh, on site survey, so installers were interviewed uh, to figure out uh, their professional and educational background, their experience in fastening technology, their general installation practice, and their general opinion with respect to the uh, adhesive anchors. I started the project in Illinois. There I monitored seven applications and uh, eight installers were interviewed. The second location was in Florida with uh, eight applications and six surveys. Then I flew to California where I visited uh, five sites and the project ended in the area of New York and uh, Pennsylvania, where in total um, six applications were monitored and uh, nine installers were interviewed. So in total, 23 job sites were visited, 26 applications were monitored, and 31 installers uh, were interviewed. For the field research project, job sites in the fields of uh, structure engineering, bridge construction, road construction, and hydraulic engineering were visited. Both uh, structural and non-structural applications were monitored. Um, the steel parts were either continuously threaded rods or deformed reinforcing bars. And the installation uh, direction was downwards and horizontally, as well as overhead applications were monitored. What I want to show you are some uh, pictures of the installations only to demonstrate the variety of the applications. What you can see here is the job site of a residential building where they've used the adhesive anchors to fix uh, sill plates um, to the existing foundation. Or here, uh, they've uh, anchored heavy stones of a facade into masonry. Or they've also used uh, bonded anchors in wastewater treatment plants to uh, anchor settling tanks. What you can see here, um, they've used a post and saw reinforcing bars uh, for an earthquake strengthening or the connection of shear walls or rebar dowling and bridge construction. Or here they've used uh, post and saw threaded rods to anchor a wood frame or uh, anchoring of uh, floor slabs to the, uh, to, uh, uh, the core of a uh, building or rebar dowling and road construction. Or here, for instance, uh, the connection of a steel column to a concrete member. This slide shows the general observations made on site. In 22 of the 26 applications, uh, so in 85%, the uh, manufacturer's product installations instructions were available on site, but only in about 20% they've really used the instructions for the, uh, uh, for the installation. For one application, the expiration date of the product was exceeded. The installers were also asked with respect to the question where they store the adhesive. The requirement for storage is that it's uh, stored in a cool, dry, and uh, well-ventilated area. Nevertheless, uh, 
Some installers answer that they only store the adhesive in a truck or a trailer or also outside the building. At the bottom, you can see the number of different products from uh, different manufacturers uh, used for these applications. In total, 30 different products, uh, both uh, epoxy-based and hybrid mortars, were used for the applications. Nine of these uh, products had an ESR number. All products were also evaluated or were analyzed to evaluate whether or not the required information uh, uh, is given to ensure a correct installation. For nine of these 13 products, it was evaluated that the information given in the manufacturer's product installation instructions is not sufficiently detailed or is too complicated for the installers to install the anchors correctly. This slide shows the findings for uh, borehole drilling and uh, uh, borehole cleaning. Depending on the product, the anchor capacity might be reduced by uh, uh, the use of an improper drill bit size. However, only in 38% of the applications a correct drill bit was used, and 23% of uh, the applications no information was given in the installation instructions. In only uh, 23% uh, of uh, the applications at depth stop, respectively, a tape was used to ensure the correct embedment depths. Here you can see a picture of an application with an adhesive bonded anchor system. These threaded rods were not cut on site. They were delivered with a length of 12 inches, and uh, the measured overlap of uh, these anchors is between 4 inches and uh, 8 inches. In consideration of the thickness of the grout layer and the shim, this is an embedment depth less than 2 inches for some of these anchors, and this is the result we're not using a depth stop. At the bottom, you can see uh, the number of different cleaning procedures performed uh, in the applications. In only six out of these uh, 26 uh, applications, the, cl the cleaning procedure of blowing and brushing was performed. And, uh, uh, and blowing and brushing is uh, the cleaning procedure, which is uh, required for most of the adhesive anchor systems. Um, therefore, in uh, only about 20%, the drill holes were cleaned correctly according to the manufacturer's product installation instructions. Here you can see the installation process. Before using a new cartridge, it is necessary to squeeze out the first adhesive in the cartridge to ensure that there is a uniform mix of uh, the adhesive. However, only uh, in 31% uh, uh, of the applications dispensing of the first mortar prior to injection uh, was monitored. To ensure that the anchor is fully seated into mortar, it is necessary that there is a uh, adhesive visible uh, around the mouth of the borehole. Spare adhesive was visible in 58% uh, of the uh, applications. A further requirement is that uh, the curing time is kept. This was monitored in about 60%. It is absolutely necessary not to disturb the curing process. Otherwise, uh, the bond between the concrete and the mortar uh, could be destroyed, and this might reduce the capacity. However, in about 20% rod contact after the installation was monitored. In some cases, uh, the installers bent the rebars or they touched uh, the threaded rods while curing. This slide uh, shows the necessity of a special inspection for the adhesive bonded anchor systems. Uh, continuous or periodic special inspection was only found in uh, California and in uh, one case in uh, Florida. While in California, all boreholes were cleaned correctly and the anchors were installed correctly, in all other locations, uh, the boreholes were not cleaned correctly. This clearly indicates uh, the need for effective special inspection, since in Florida, the uh, special inspection was not effective. As already mentioned, the second part of the project was an on-site survey. So in total, 31 installers were interviewed. The majority of the installers had uh, professions like uh, iron worker, mill rider, uh, carpenter or general construction workers. What you can see is that most of the installers have many years of uh, experience in their professions and also the field of uh, post-installed anchoring technology is not new for them. The installers were also asked with respect to the question where they have their knowledge from. 65% of the installers answered that they have uh, their training either by a colleague or only from learning by doing. And only 25% answered that they were trained from a manufacturer or in an in-house seminar. And 10% uh, of the installers answered that they have their knowledge from other sources uh, such as schools. So what you can see is independent of the experience, uh, lack of training is evident. Um, the installers were also asked about the influence of the drilling method. What you can see is that in uh, 
only 60% the installers know that uh, the drilling method has an influence on the anchor capacity. And from these 60%, only half of them know that hammer drilling gives a higher capacity for adhesive bonded anchors. A similar question was asked with respect to the influence of uh, uh, cleaning the boreholes. Um, here, 25% uh, uh, do not know that cleaning of, uh, of the boreholes affects the bonded anchor capacity. And 33% the insurers answered that they are cleaning by blowing with a compressor, and at 27% they answered that they are cleaning by blowing and brushing, and this agrees very well with the findings on site. The findings of the field research project clearly indicates that there is a huge difference between uh, the regulations of the evaluation reports and the way people install the anchors on site, and 65% or 65% of all installers answered that they never had any proper training in anchoring technology. For 70%, or about 70% uh, of the products, it was not possible to find all the, re uh, the required information to ensure a correct installation. It was also found that in only about 40% the correct drill bit was used. Only in about 20% uh, the cleaning of the boreholes were done according to the installation instructions. Um, installers simply using uh, the tools which are available on site and not the tools which are required according to the installation instructions. And only on sites where effective special inspection was conducted, the cleaning and the installation process was really performed according to the installation instructions. It was uh, monitored that in some applications, the mixing of the components and the amount of the adhesive was also not sufficient. And in about 20% of the applications, uh, in stores bent the rebars or touched uh, the threaded rod, so the curing process was not kept. So in summary, there is sufficient and proper knowledge available to ensure reliable fastenings with adhesive bonded anchors. Furthermore, detailed acceptance criteria are available to test the suitability of these anchors, so only products with an ESR number should be used. What we need are correct manufacturer's product installation instructions, we need uh, well-trained installers, and we need effective special inspection to ensure safe and reliable fastenings. What I want to show you at the end of my presentation is a safety instruction you can find in uh, every airplane. There is so much information you have to follow in case uh, of an emergency, but it's absolutely clear there are a lot of pictures and it is self-explaining. Please uh, keep this in mind when thinking about the improvement of a manufacturer's product installation instruction. Why should this, what is possible for a safety instruction in an airplane, not possible for a manufacturer's product installation instruction? When using adhesive anchors, the human factor comes into play. So the findings of the, the field research project clearly demonstrate. So first point, there is a lack of knowledge. Many installers do not know how su such systems work. They do not know what the, the influencing parameters are. So in other words, they do not want to make a bad job, but they do not have the knowledge to install the anchors correctly. And second point is, there are a lot of products on the market which have installation instructions which are not sufficiently detailed or which are too complicated. So there are two points I want to keep you in mind. Uh, installers urgently need a more detailed education. We have to sensibilize the installers what is necessary or what is important when using an adhesive anchor system. Therefore, ACI committee C601-A adhesive anchor installers working on a new certification program for installers, and this is absolutely a step in the correct direction. And second point is uh, we need clear and unmistakable uh, installation instructions. So criteria for uniform manufacturer's product installation instructions should be demanded. Thank you very much for your uh, attention.